Robert. So we would like to ask you to make a brief opening statement and then we will go to questions. Yeah, obviously we're uh, very excited obviously to be here, part of a you know historic Sugar Bowl. So uh, got a great opponent. Um, you know, I think Ole Miss is, has been uh, uh, very, obviously very explosive on offense. We got some great players. Uh, it's a huge challenge in front of us, but uh, it should be a great ball game. All right, we will start with John Werner from the Waco Tribune Herald. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, hey. What, do you, what do you see from Matt Corral, and uh, what, what's the David's going to have to do to maybe contain him a little bit? Yeah, uh, Matt's uh, he's got a live arm. Um, uh, he's uh, athletic. He can extend plays. He create plays. Um, I think he, sometimes he's got eyes on the sides of his head. He sees receivers. I don't know how he's seeing them sometimes. He's very impressive. Very impressive quarterback. Uh, so one of the things we got to do is make sure we got to make him a little uncomfortable. Um, we're going to have to pressure him. Uh, you know, we've got to have an effective rush because if he sits back there and has time to go to a second, third progression and, and do that stuff, uh, and he's just he's dangerous and he'll just keep the sticks moving. So we got to get to be an effective pass rush. And then, um, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, keeping him in the pockets, another thing, you know, not let him extend plays, get out of the pocket and find those receivers down the field. Okay, we'll go ahead and we can go ahead to Curtis Quillen from KCN TV in Waco. Hey, Coach. Um, you had a you, – I believe you were Coach Aranda's first hire when he took the job at Baylor. How long have you known him? What's that relationship like? And what was it that led to you saying yes so quickly to joining this staff? Yeah, um, I guess I've known him for about 20, 20 years. Yeah, probably goes back to around 99, 2000. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's – uh, uh, you know, I think one thing is just the – uh, it's been a relationship that's kind of been built off the fact that we're both the kind of football junkies. Uh, love talking, love studying the game. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously the opportunity to get back with him was was huge. I mean, I'll, it was a no-brainer at that point for where I was at um, uh, to to be around him, know what type of person he is and, and how he's going to treat players. And uh, uh, he's a very genuine person. Uh, he's uh, one of the true nice guys in his profession. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, I, was, I was very excited about the opportunity. So to me, it wasn't even a second thought. I said yes before he told me even salary. How about that one? <laughs> okay, next we'll go with David Eubin from The Athletic. Hey. Uh, yeah, when you uh, sort of look at, at stopping this offense, what, what are sort of the, the principles that, that, that you guys follow as a defense uh, to, to, to slow down this, so this spread? Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, first of all, it's like, like any other time is that uh, it's about stopping the run. You know, the one thing they do have, you know, they've got incredible running backs. You know, Ely and uh, uh, Snoop are, are really good football players, you know. So they've got a, they got a, a running back core that's pretty outstanding, and uh, it starts with running the football. Um, so, I mean, you got to do that. And then uh, with him, it's a lot about uh, – they go so fast. So the biggest key is really make sure you get your cleats in the turf and get lined up. You know, so many times their their tempo of their game is, is so much faster than anything else you're seeing that, uh, you know, you flip on the, the game film and so many people can't even get lined up. Uh, a lot of explosive comes off of that. And then they wear people out just because of their tempo. Guys getting tired and not rushing a quarterback. And then they're just, you know, letting receivers open. So, uh, that's going to be huge. I mean, it really is. It's adjusting to the tempo of the game, realizing how fast it's going to go, and then and being able to stop the run and, and get us in some situations where we know he's going to throw the football. We can tee it up. We can go after him, and you know, and we'll have a, we'll have a much better chance at that point to to have some rush integrity and, and and be able to keep him in the pocket and put him in tight quarters and make him throw the ball in tight windows. Okay. Next, we'll have Ted Lewis with the New Orleans Advocate. Be sure to unmute. That's right. Uh, sort of along the lines of the earlier question, you were Ron, you were Dave's boss. At oh, you kind of got muted or something. We lost you, Ted. I'm sorry. There you go. I heard you there. Can you hear me now? Yep, I got you. Uh, I'm sorry. You were his boss, and now I lost him again. All right. 
I get about the two or three words in there and then it kind of. Yeah, I think it's your connection, Ted. Let's go to um, Jerry Hill with Baylor Bear Insider. Hey, Ron, uh, you talked about the pass rush and stuff. At what point, or did it just take time for that defensive line to, to really develop and become what they've become? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we're fairly young up front, you know, uh, and then obviously, you know, uh, the what I mean, great players. We had talent. We knew that. Um, and I think Coach Johnson's done a tremendous job with them, obviously developing them. Uh, I think what they have developed into is goes through to one how hard they work. It's not just a bunch of talented guys. They are talented, but they've done a tremendous job of working at their technique and fundamentals on a daily basis, and um, they've really gone went, went into mastering their craft, and and that's been huge. That's been really huge. Okay, uh, Kay Longquist, can you please let us know your affiliation? Uh, Ron, Ron you got to both Kalen Barnes and uh, Christian Morgan back uh, a little bit for the – you got Christian Morgan back as well as yeah. uh, Kalen Barnes back uh, for the Oklahoma State game in the Big 12 championship. Played a little – played a limited, but they but they still played for you. And the fact that you've got them a month later, are they pr pretty much more healthy that they can give you a full game? Or what can you expect from those two? Um, they could both, I, I think they both could give a full game. I think they're capable of that. Uh, Christian probably, uh, would be the, the one that we would have any concerns about, um, you know, how much he goes, how long he goes. It's really kind of a lot of what situation it gets in him. So, um, uh, I think they're, they're both healthy and they're both ready to play. You know, I also, there's a chance that, you know, McVeigh stepped up and had an outstanding football game, uh, in the championship game, um. So I think they're both available and they're both ready to go. Okay, we have Jack Allen with KXX TV in Waco. Hey coach, um, Jalen Petrie has made such a big impact on this defense. I was wondering if you could give some insight into what's made him so successful this year. Is there something technically that he's really improved on and just what kind of an impact does he make on this defense? Yeah, well, I, I first saw this that uh, Jalen obviously is a really good football player. He's got natural and he's got ability and all that stuff. The thing that makes Jalen uh, what he is and is such a good player is his work ethic, work ethic, his habits. Um, he's got a tremendous football IQ, uh, but he he puts the time in for that. That guy is in our office every night watching film. Um, I mean, and I'm every night. He's there every night for a couple hours and he's watching film. Um, his, and he's got a tremendous football IQ. When somebody lines up on an offense, motion a guy or cut a split from a wide receiver, he knows what the play is going. And the, the, the biggest probably value he brings to us is that he, uh, he's telling everybody else what's going to happen. Great, tremendous communicator on the football field. You know, X cuts a split inside the numbers and he's yelling out the routes, you know, telling the corners what's, what's coming and where they got to get to. And, uh, so it's his uh, leadership ability, but his, intel his in football intelligence has really been able to, um, you know, share that with the other football players on the field is really, that's what allowed us to elevate our level. Okay. Let's try Ted Lewis again with the advocate in New Orleans. All right. You guys can hear me this time? Yeah. Great. Uh, you were talking earlier about working with Dave. Uh, he, you were his boss. Now he's your boss. How's that kind of relationship been? How much, how much leeway, if that's the right word, does he give you at directing the defense? Because now he has head coaching responsibilities. Also on, uh, uh, on, on Petrie, how much do you think, what do you think about uh, so many guys opting out for bolts? He came back. He's, he's playing. What does that say about him and how much of an example has that set for the rest of the team? Okay. Uh, the first one, um, what, uh, um, I'm not just back. Okay. Um, they, I mean, I think the relationship's good. I mean, you know, again, as far as uh, his, uh, uh, you know, he's got a lot of things on his plate, obviously, you know, sitting here as, as a power five head football coach, you know, as far as, and his, where he steps, most of his, 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 uh, his focus is on our players and recruiting. He does a tremendous job recruiting, but probably does a better job actually with our football player, our current team, just to making sure on a daily basis that, Hey, he's putting them first and he has a lot of daily meetings with our players and stuff. So he's a very busy person. So obviously yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for that. The opportunity that my trust he's put into me to, 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 uh, to lead the defensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, obviously I say it all the time though. I wish he was in our meetings more, you know, uh, I enjoy talking football with him. That was, you know, I mean, that's, that's, uh, uh, obviously one of the things I love doing. So, um, uh, it, when you look at Jalen, 
his ability, you know, to not opt out. Uh, I don't know if that was ever a question with him. Uh, he, the man, the kid, uh, he, he loves football, you know. Um, so I think I think if you if you put the ball down in the park and said uh, on Sunday afternoon at noon and said that there's going to be a pickup game at the park and there was going to be some pretty good players and let's go see how we can do. I think he'd he'd turn around and play again on Sunday. Okay, let's go with Darby Brown from KWTX TV in Waco. Hey, Coach. Um, earlier this week, Coach Grimes had talked about how, you know, the experience of the defense actually made it pretty difficult in the beginning for them to sort of dive into that offensive turnaround. But then there was a moment when they kind of caught up, and obviously we've seen that this season. How do you feel like that group has then elevated the defense the rest of this season? Um, I think they've done an outstanding job. Uh, you know, again, uh, uh, there is not just on a daily uh, practice, Practice habits where iron sharpens iron, and then as they get better, they make us better. Um, there's that part of it, but there is a true confidence. I think it gives a defensive player when he goes off the field when he's seen an offensive line run the football, when he's seeing Abe Smith uh, breaking tackles, you know, or, or Tristan, you know, making guys miss and moving the football. Um, that energy and that confidence is is contagious, and uh, and I think it's allowed us to feed off of them. Okay, we have time for one more. Curtis Quillen with KCEN TV in Waco. Coach, we Darby just kind of touched on it. It was kind of an offensive wholesale change after last season. But during spring ball and during fall camp, you mentioned that for the defense, it was pretty much just picking up where you guys left off. What did you guys see during that two and seven season that you liked so much defensively that you were able to build on to get to this point? There wasn't a lot of things I saw in a two and seven season I liked, but no, <laughs> uh, no, what I saw there, uh, uh, you know, obviously that was a tough, it was a tough year, tough year for the players, tough year for the coaches. You know, it's, it's tough to go through that to really to have people to believe, you know, there's a lot of questions there open. I thought Dave, I, I'll, I'll say this, that, that, that I'll give all that credit to coach Aranda for keeping this group together and keeping them focused and his tremendous job of, of putting the players first allowed us to, Probably to recover from that two and seven season. Um, so there, you know, what I did see from the defensive side is that, you know, our kids had, a, you know, I, I loved our work ethic. I loved our, our, our intelligence level. I think we got to use that as our benefit, you know, is that uh, uh, Baylor is a great academic institute, but better than, you know, is an unbelievable academic institution. And then, and the, the character kids we get, that we've got to use that to our advantage. And so that was one of the things I talked about was that, Hey, we, we got to put more on their plate. Our, our kids can handle it. That's used one of the best assets they, uh, assets they have is their minds. So um, we, we do a lot more uh, checking at the line of scrimmage by off of formations and situations. And I'm putting a lot on their plate. And why? It's because they can handle it. And that's uh, that, that's a lot of fun to do as a football coach is that you, it opens the door up to, to put you in a lot of really good situations because your kids are intelligent enough to handle it and uh, they did a good job of communication across the board. So I, I saw the work ethic, the attitude, the intelligence factor, and just a tremendous character of our guys is what I leaned on to say is there's just, you know, a great place to coach and a great, young, great group of young men to have. All right. Thanks, Coach Roberts. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.